Welcome to the nightclub guys, it is once again your host Night Rancher. Now actually before we actually begin the video, I would like to ask you guys to take a little bit of time to actually push the like button uh, and if not subscribe uh, to this channel. I really would like to know who uh, these kinds of videos interest and what direction I should be taking with this channel. Prim my primary focus is to help the majority of people and if the majority of people don't like 3DZE videos or if they would prefer other things I would really like to know uh, and by knowing uh, you guys can either comment or leave a like or a dislike to the video and that would point me in the general direction of what you guys want to see and that if you can get me to post that then I will be able to post excellent content that you guys are more excited to see than the content I have been putting up so so thank you guys very much in advance and enjoy the show it's been again a tiresome process but finally I'm able to get this video out to you guys um, first and foremost uh, you always want to take off the hood and the battery without that um, you're probably gonna either hurt yourself when you're pulling something out or you're going to fry something and that's not good. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna take off pretty much anything that's hooked up to the engine from the body. That includes hoses, connectors, any kind of bolts, any kind of brackets or harnesses that overlap. Most of the stuff was covered in the first video, but now that I have the second video up, I'm just kind of breezing through. What I didn't show in the first video where I, did, where I am showing now is uh, the actual removal of the intake manifold. In my original part one, I removed the engine transmission and harness together in one piece whereas this one I'm just moving the engine and transmission out of the truck and leaving the harness inside the truck I'm not going to actually be uh, removing it all together in one piece mainly because I don't want to disturb the truck uh, and I want to leave as much of it intact as possible so definitely the first step would be to remove the intake manifold. The throttle body is always removed before the intake manifold to remove the coolant hoses that are under it and then you take off the intake manifold and remove everything that's connecting to it. The next thing after that you want to take off the coolant block sitting on the back of the engine. Uh, it probably has either four to five to six different sensors depending on the year. Uh, you just want to unhook all of them and be very careful after 25 odd years of use and abuse they become very brittle and they're very prone to cracking so you want to remove the block uh, with as little trouble as possible you don't want to break anything because everything does have to come back in as you took it off because you don't want to mix and match sensors and switches with models that don't have that particular sensor and switch another reason why you want to take that off is because when you're removing the engine and transmission together uh, the engine and transmission tend to tilt backwards and when they tilt backwards they tend to break the sensor so you really want to remove the block uh, before moving on to anything else after that you have access to the fuel line, the main fuel line that hooks up to the to passenger side fuel rail. Uh, from the fuel rail, it goes onto the 10 millimeter bowl, and then you can just move the whole hose out of the way. After that, you take off the plugs that connect to the injectors, and then the one on the driver's side, there's going to be a knock sensor connector that you're going to be taking off as well. After that, you have the distributor connector and then the distributor connector to harness. Uh, those aren't difficult to remove, you just got to make sure you don't break them. After that, you just pull the entire harness out of the engine. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process, it shouldn't take more than an hour. Uh, undoing everything and double checking all your work and that's an hour if you're actually going like slow like I do and like I usually do when I'm filming because I don't want uh, to just be a slurry of things and I just kind of take it slow and one step at a time to get everything so that everything comes back in uh, just the way it came out. After you're done on top you want to go ahead and raise the truck as high as you can um, before supporting it with either some heavy duty jack stands or if you want to get these plastic ramps that you can get at the parts store. They're fairly cheap, they're only about $35 for the pair um, and they're lifesavers. Without those you have a very difficult time getting to the transmission, uh, the cross member bolts, everything that's on the bottom just it's a really big um, annoyance trying to deal with all that. After everything's up on the air, you're going to drain all the fluids, take off the O2 sensor, take off the sway bar. You're going to be removing the drive shaft. You're going to be also removing the shift linkage and all the connectors that go through it. 
uh, it's fairly easy. One thing I do want to know is that when you're taking off the down pipe that hooks up to the top header, uh, you're going to need an extension of about two feet so you can actually reach three bolts that hook up to the top. And if they're rusted through, you've got to make sure you're using quality sockets because the cheap sockets will end up rounding off the nuts and you're never going to get it off after that if you do that. Then you're going to take off the any remaining parts that are hooked up to the transmission. And like I said, you're going to be taking off the drive shaft. On the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive trucks, it's different, but either way, you're still going to be taking off four bolts. Uh, the difference is at the front, uh, drive shaft has to be removed when you're taking off the four-wheel drive uh, from the transfer case, uh, whereas the two-wheel drive, there's no front drive shaft. Also, that when you have a four-wheel drive transfer case, you've got to take off the two hoses that hook up to the transfer case cooler. After you do that, uh, everything else is straightforward. There's an extra shift linkage that go that connects from the tunnel all the way to one side of the transmission and then to the other side of the transfer case while on the four-wheel drive truck. After you start to lower the transmission, you're going to have access to the top four or five bolts that hold the top part of the bell housing. If you're not going to uh, be removing the engine and transmission out together like I have to because the, this engine is seized You're going to have to dump uh, The transmission just like that unbolt the bolts and then also hook up the bolt hook up the cross member back to how it was After that you're just going to remove the access plates and then go into uh, removing the starter connections and the motor mounts. You're going to go ahead and deflate the tires because it allows the truck um, to sit lower and then when it sits lower it's easier for your hoist to pull the engine and transmission out without having to lift as high as you would have to if you up the tire. Another thing to note is that when you do take the air out make sure you leave just enough air so you can actually fit the uh, hoist under the truck and after the hoist is under the truck it's very easy um, to move out. The only other thing that I would like to note is that when you attach the chains to the engine you're going to be grabbing um, from the farther forward most point of the engine. You don't want to grab from the back of the engine because if you grab from the back the engine on the two wheel drives don't, don't have enough weight on the back to tilt uh, whereas on the four wheel drives, if you hook it up, uh, however, the engine is still going to tilt back because of the weight of the transfer case. And that's pretty much it. Everything else on this video is just me taking this apart uh, the hard way because since I can't turn the crank, there's no way to get to the torque converter bolts. And if there's no way to get to the torque converter bolts, there's no way to actually unbolt the transmission from the engine uh, without possibly damaging the torque converter in the process and that's probably something I don't want to do so I decided to pull it all together all in all to me it was uh, somewhat of an easier venture taking the engine transmission out together um, instead of taking it out in two pieces I've done this like I said five times and out of the five times I've always um, opted for taking the engine transmission out together uh, on the four-wheel drive trucks especially where you don't really have a lot of room taking off the torque converter bolts and taking off the little brackets to hide the cover plate it's just not feasible to just be wasting a lot of time uh, trying to take those bolts off when you could just spend the same amount of time and pull everything out and once everything's out you have the opportunity to just replace all the seals that you wouldn't normally be able to easily replace when the engine and transmission are inside the truck. So that's another thing to keep note. Um, I do end up replacing the entire uh, intake manifold, lower intake manifold from the existing engine and I'm going to transfer it onto the new engine. And the reason for that is because my old truck had a 390,000 mile engine, I had to reuse the lower manifold. And when I did reuse the lower manifold, I broke injectors and I broke clips and I, I'm getting a lot of leaks everywhere. So that's one thing I do have to replace and refurbish because any kind of leak on a 3VZE can cause a fire and you really don't want to end up with the fire after you've spent all this time working on it. So uh, we've reached the end of the video. Um, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know if I'm doing things correctly let me know if it's something that you guys are interested in have changed the style of the video 
uh, over the last three or four videos. I don't know what kind of reception I'm going to be getting from here on out. I am going to be trying to post much sooner uh, than I have been. I mean, I know two months wasn't very soon, but compared to probably a year that it, to me it feels it was just yesterday. So that'll be it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you soon. Night Wrencher, out.